Happy Friday. Two winning days in a row. Let's make it three. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back into another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I am your host, Steven, and we're back on a Friday, the end of the week. You got to love it. TGIF to everybody. Uh, winning couple days for us. Let's make it three in a row today. There is a lot of games, a lot of bets that I like today. Uh, we got a huge show for you today. But first, speaking of show, uh, see what I did there? Shohei Otani is not going to be traded according to the Angels. They are going for it. Then they decide to trade for Lucas Giolito just to show how much they are going for it. I don't know why. I've never seen a team do something like this when they're just trying to catch on to a last wild card spot. They have no chance of winning a World Series, so it's just baffling to me. But it is what it is. Good luck, Angels. Um, like I said, I love this slate today. There's 15 games, and we got a lot going on for you. Good hitter matchups, good pitcher strikeout matchups. Who's on fire in the last 15 days? The pitcher report, three best bets, and a Friday parlay. That's right. It is a lot going on right now. Uh, but before we dive into all that, smash that like button. Just go crazy on it. Absolutely crazy. Go tell everyone you know, share the video, tell them to like it, leave a comment below with uh, anything, your best bet, what you're doing this weekend, anything you want to do. Um, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And also, if you're new to the channel, just so you know, we are a video that gives out our own best bets, but also gives you a ton of research help because we want you guys to make the decision uh, when it comes to your hard-earned money and all these bets. So um, just want to let you guys know, I've gotten a few comments below that, uh, you know, they get mad when I have a losing day and stuff like that. It hasn't been many, but... Uh, if you are just only watching for the bets, and I don't think you're quite doing it right, because there's a lot of other parts to this um, with the hitter matchups, the pitcher matchups, all that kind of stuff like we talk about. So hopefully you guys are paying attention to all of it, and it helps you guys out. I have been getting a ton of support, so thank you guys for all that. I appreciate it. We're on the path to 6,000 subscribers now. All right. Stop talking, Steven. It's time. Let's go to the bets recap. There it is. Tuesday recap, two and two, plus a half a unit. Uh, Rays minus one and a half was an absolutely horrendous bet. They got just rocked. Just rocked. Yelich and Bellinger. Uh, Bellinger gave me a couple more gray hairs and got a home run in the eighth or ninth inning in his last at bet to cash that. Over eight Mariners and Twins, one of the easiest winners of the year. They cashed that in like the fourth inning. Orioles money line up three to one, tied four to four. They lost six to four. The Orioles hate me. That's why I put a half unit on it. As you watch that video, they absolutely hate me. We have a hate hate relationship right now. Wednesday, yesterday. One bet and one bet only. Bellinger and McNeil, one plus hit each. Bellinger got it early, and McNeil waited till the eighth inning right before a lightning delay to get a hit. Thank you. But these uh, sweaty hitter parlays are adding a lot of years to my life. I'm just saying. But there we are, three and two, up one and a half units. And then on the season, 183, 177, up 2.94. We got to get better. Let's keep it up. Um, but before we dive into the good hitter matchups, we got to talk about Odds Jam. All right, we got to talk about our exciting partnership with Odds Jam. Because just like me, I like to give you guys help with your research to make it easier for you. Odds Jam does the same thing. All you have to do is sign up with your email. It's free to sign up, and you can go look up all of the different odds on different sports books. Look at this right here. This is just a screenshot of what you get, and it scrolls over to all the different sports books. You can see which book has the best odds, make the best bet. And that's all for free, guys. That's right. That's one of the tools that you get for free. And then if you want to do more than that, they have EV screens, which is expected value. I mean, it is incredible. It tells you which one's the best bet. And long term, it's the best way to do it, honestly. Uh, maybe it matches with what you have. And then they also have fantasy optimizers. So they use underdog fantasy, prize picks, all those. Gives you the best bet and the best book, all those kind of things. There is a ton of amazing tools, whether you like player props, money line, whatever it is. Um, if you want to sign up for those plans, make sure to use the promo code Jabba. You get 25% off on those two. So that is exciting. If you just want to look at the different odds and different sports books to help you with that part of it, that's free. Sign up with your email. But like I said, if you do want to go any farther than that, use any other tools like I love to use that really helps me out with my betting, you got to use that promo code Jabba. So that is Odds Jam. Got to love it. I love working with them. And now it's time for the good hitter matchups. All right, it is time for the good hitter matchups. And typically, we would put it right here on the side of the screen, but we have 18 of them today for you. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put it all on one screen so it's a lot easier for you. Go check this out right here. We got 18. Look at these guys. I mean, we start out with three Cubs players. They hit Jordan Montgomery pretty well. 
take a screenshot of this. I hope it helps you. Um, I'm not going to read every single one. You guys don't want to sit here and listen to that. But um, on the right side in the middle, you see Alejandro Kirk, though, four for 11 and three bombs. Three of his four hits are bombs. Um, we got some twin hitters that are hitting Singer pretty well. And uh, also three Phillies hitters on the left side, Castellanos, Riamuto, and Schwarber. So, anyways, those are the good hitter matchups for July 28th. Now it's time to get those s'mores ready. Who's on fire? All right, here we go. It is time to talk about some hitters that are on fire in the last 15 days. This is where all those hitter props come from. I look at it quite a bit, too. Uh, we got to start with Cody Bellinger. My goodness, leading the league in the last 15 days, six bombs, 17 ribbies, and he's been a part of three winning hitter parlays in a row for me. So that's been huge. Um, not as many guys in the 400s like we've seen before, but Kyle Tucker down there on my fantasy team, by the way, five bombs, 13 ribbies, hitting 429, just absolutely ripping the cover off the ball. Uh, Mickey Moniak, number one pick overall, by the way, hitting 409. Riley Green for Detroit, silently having a, a good little two weeks. Um, but yeah, that's page one. Again, these are minimum 32 at bats and a 350 average or higher is what we use to give you the hitters on fire for the last 15 days. Let's move on to page number two. See what we got going on there. Look at that at the bottom. Who had Tristan Casas? Casas? I have no idea, guys. I've never heard his name actually said. Um, so you Red Sox fans can laugh at me. But 469 average, almost hitting 500 with six bombs. That is impressive. Along with Connor Wong, two guys that are not meant to or not thought of as carrying that Boston Red Sox lineup. Um, but anyways, you got Chaz McCormick, Alex Bregman, the Astros hitters. And now they get Altuve and Jordan back. Oh, fun times. Uh, but yeah, we got Edward Julian. Julian hitting 410, three bombs, five ribbies. I mean, guys, there's just hitters up and down. Michael Harris, the nine hitter for the Braves. Come on, that's not fair. But uh, anyways, those are the best hitters in the last 15 days. I hope you guys just strike gold and all these guys just light up the scoreboard this weekend for you. Uh, so let's get some winners. And now it's time to move on to the good pitcher strikeout matchups. All right, let's go. We got three good pitcher strikeout matchups for you today. And it starts out with Kevin Gaussman of the Blue Jays going against the Angels. Angels sixth highest K percentage versus righties in the last 30 days at 25.9%. Gal spent 162 strikeouts in 121.2 innings. He has seven plus strikeouts in four straight games, just so you know. Next one, the lefty Mackenzie Gore of the Nationals against the Mets. Mets, eighth highest K percentage versus lefties the last 30 days at 25.4%. It's a little bit higher when they're at home, too, which is surprising. Uh, Gore, 123 Ks in 101 innings. He has faced the Mets twice this year. He has struck out three, and he struck out ten. That probably doesn't help you, but I just want to let you know. Uh, the last one, Cutter Crawford of the Red Sox going against the Giants. Giants, fourth highest K percentage versus righties in the last 30 days at 26.6%. Crawford, 69 Ks in 71.1 innings. He has had between three and five strikeouts in eight of his last nine starts. Just saying. He's pretty consistent right in that three to five range. So, those are the best pitcher strikeout matchups, and now it is time for the pitcher report. All right, let's go. These are the first eight matchups on the pitcher report for Friday. Uh, we got some interesting matchups like Garrett Cole versus Grayson Rodriguez, a stud Cy Young candidate versus a, a youngster who's trying to find himself right now. Uh, Cole, 3.4 expected ERA, Grayson, 6.1. Um, but since Grayson's been promoted again, he's kind of pitched a little bit better, at least in his last start. Uh, and then we, we're going to talk about a lot of these matchups, honestly. I got three bets and a parlay, but Wheeler Keller. Keller has been struggling lately. He has fallen apart right now. Um, and then that Cleveland White Sox one, it's like whatever to me. Curry and Toussaint, guys that aren't going to go deep into the game. Um, and then that bottom one, that's a pretty good one. Shane McClanahan versus Christian Javier. Two guys we all expected to be competing for the Cy Young. McClanahan still is, uh, but Javier is definitely not. So that should be an interesting matchup with two good lineups there. And then, uh, as you can see, the, if you have not seen this before, the averages are on the bottom. The innings and the record mean absolutely nothing for averages. But average K percent is 21.6%. Average ERA, 4.68, blah, 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 all that. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Um, but, like, we also got that one more matchup, Mackenzie Gore and Scherzer. That's a pretty interesting matchup to me. I don't see a lot of runs in that game. Um, but I think it's a good matchup. Scherzer's kind of been hit and miss, and as has Gore. So that is page one. Let's move on to the second page of matchups. And uh, this page doesn't have anybody higher than I think like 25.4%. It looks like Logan Webb is the highest K percentage on this page on the bottom. 
Um, but Brady Singer has been struggling, and we will talk about him. Don't you worry. Uh, Oakland, Colorado, if you're watching that game, uh, you should really find other hobbies to do unless you are an Oakland or Colorado. Uh, Logan Gilbert and Tommy Henry, two guys that are pitching pretty decent. It's a good matchup. Musgrove going against the number one or number two offense in the league in the Rangers. So we're going to find out how real and how good Musgrove really is in that matchup. That's for sure. So. Anyways, these are the numbers. I hope you guys get something out of this. Obviously, expected ERA is something that kind of predicts the future a little bit more. Doesn't mean they're guaranteed to uh, struggle or do better that next game, but um, more of a long-term thing. So check out the innings pitch, too, to make sure you know they have a big sample size and all that. So that is the pitcher report for July 28th, and now it is time, baby, for the best bets. All right, game number one takes us to Mahomes country. That's right. We got the Twins at the Royals. Twins money line minus 170. Royals money line plus 145 with an over-under of nine and a half runs. I got a best bet in this game, and I love it. It is the Twins minus one and a half runs at plus 104. Here we go. Twins have played the Royals ten times this year already. Ten. The Twins are nine and one. Guess how many of those nine they've won by two or more runs? waiting all nine of them that's right all nine of them they have won by two plus runs in Sonny gray's last five starts versus the royals between last year and this year he has won all five of those starts by two plus runs that's pretty impressive too um they are the road team they get nine plus at bats i love that but brady singer on the mound for the royals um it's too bad he's actually not a singer that would probably be a better profession for him this year because I really just don't like him. I don't think he's pitching very well. I don't like. I don't mean like him as a person. I mean as a pitcher. Um, the expectations were high on him. He's never really lived up to him. He's just struggling this year. He's given up 10.3 hits per nine innings, only an 18.8% K rate, as you guys just saw, 5.55 ERA, almost a one and a half whip. I mean, it's just not pretty. Here's why I like the matchup. Other than the Twins just dominating the Royals. Twins offense, they're active hitters right now in this lineup, not twins of past years or anything like that. These twins hitters are 29 for 81 versus Singer, which is a 358 average. You saw a bunch of them on the hitter matchup report. Um, they are also 6 WRC+, 7th OPS, and 4th in ISO power versus righties in the last 30 days. They are averaging 5.8 runs per game versus the Royals this season. I just think they're going to put up a ton of runs. And you got Sonny Gray on the other side. I know Sonny Gray hasn't been in the absolute perfect form like he was. I know that. Um, but in two starts versus the Royals this year, 11 innings, eight hits, and one earned run given up in those 11 innings. So he has a good feel for these Royals hitters. Um, three earned runs or less in eight of his last 10 starts. So it's not like he's turned into some terrible pitcher, but um, he doesn't even need to be that great, guys. We're talking about a Royals offense that is just not very good. Uh, my notes here on the Royals offense say they suck. I don't need to explain that they suck. They just do. So Twins minus one and a half is my best bet in this game. Let's move on to the next bet. All right, game number two takes us out to L.A. We got the Reds at the Dodgers. Dodgers money line minus 255. Reds money line plus 210 with an over-under of nine and a half runs. The Dodgers just traded for Ahmed Rosario from the Guardians, by the way, just to let you know. My best bet, Reds team total over three and a half runs. I got this at minus 120 on FanDuel. I don't even mind it at four if you're getting like plus 100 or something. Uh, Bobby Miller's on the mound, guys. I think the league's catching up to him. He started out on fire, and then like a lot of rookie pitchers, you get more film on them. You know what pitch they throw in certain counts, what location, all that kind of stuff, and you start catching up to him. 24 earned runs given up in his last 31.2 innings. This is a guy who gave up four runs to the Pirates, three to the Royals, and seven to the Giants. You're telling me the Reds can't just get four? Just four. That's it. Dodgers bullpen, they're back to kind of being below average like they've been all year. They had a one- to two-week hot stretch right after the All-Star break, um, but they're nothing to be scared about either. So uh, Reds offense, even though they started out a little cold out of the All-Star break, they're averaging 5.6 runs per game in the last 10 games now. Top 12 in WRC Plus and OPS. They are eighth in ISO power versus righties in the last 30 days. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, we only need four. Nine guaranteed at bats for the Reds. Do not let me down, Cincy. Don't do it. Reds team total over three and a half is the best bet. And now it's time, baby, for that hitter parlay. All right, let's stay hot with these hitter parlays. We have won a ton lately, so let's keep it rolling. The bet today Bryce Harper and Edward Julian, one plus hit each at minus 117 on FanDuel. Let's start out with Bryce Harper. 
Uh, he's four for six versus Keller. That's a good start. Okay, he's not a huge sample size, but that's nice. Hitting 319 in the last 15 days. Hitting 303 versus righties this year. He has one plus hit in 12 of his last 15 games. You got all that. Now, like you're going to see in both of these, I targeted some pitchers that are struggling. He is going up against Mitch Keller. Yes, he was an all-star for the Pirates, but that seems like years ago now for him. He has given up eight plus hits in three of his last four games. He is giving up a ton of hits. How about 18 runs in the last 23 innings? I mean, I think this Phillies offense, I almost went with their team total today. Um, I think this Phillies offense can score a bit, uh, quite a bit, and I think Bryce Harper could get five at-bats this game. Um, I expect a lot of runs, a lot of hits. Bryce Harper, you can't, you got to go. You got to get a hit. There's just no way you can't get a hit against Mitch Keller. Everybody is hitting off Mitch Keller. All the cool kids are doing it. Anyways, next one, Edward Julian. Julian! Hitting a ridiculous, you just saw it. He's hitting a ridiculous 410 in the last 15 days. He is hitting in the two hole in this lineup for the Twins, by the way, for those of you who have no idea who he is, which was kind of me a couple weeks ago. Um, anyways, he is facing another good matchup, Brady Singer. 10 hits per nine innings, only an 18.8% K rate. He's given up 12 earned runs in his last 19 innings. I mean, guys, we got two pitchers that are not pitching well. They're giving up a ton of hits. Uh, Keller has a decent strikeout rate, but Brady Singer does not. And then behind both of these teams, what do you have? Two horrendous bullpens with the Pirates and the Royals. So give me one plus hit for Harper and one plus hit for Julian at minus 117 as my favorite hitter parlay of the day. And now it is time for that end of the week Friday parlay. All right, it is time for that Friday parlay. We are due for a winner. I am sick of winning two out of three legs. It's time. Let's go. We got the Phillies money line over eight and the Brewers and Braves and Astros team total over three and a half runs. I got that at plus 310 on DraftKings. All right, I'll try to keep this as short as possible. Phillies money line is the first one. They're going up against Keller. We already talked about it. He's struggling. Uh, the Pirates are pretty much toast this year, guys. Uh, they just traded away Carlos Santana. They've been pretty much struggling for a while now. Uh, Wheeler's in better form. The Phillies have one of the better bullpens in the league, surprising to me as well. Um, and the Pirates are awful. So they have the advantage on the mound. They have the advantage in the bullpen. Yes, the Phillies' bats have been struggling a little bit lately. But what better way to break out than against Mitch Keller, who gives up some uh, some power to lefties. And I think they have some lefty power there in that Phillies lineup, or just power in general. So I think it's a great one. Uh, Keller, 14 earned runs in his last two starts. I think the Phillies go off. I think they win easy in this game. So give me the Phillies money line. Next one, over 8 in the Brewers and Braves. This is an alt line. The over-under right now is 10. I took it down to 8 and took the over. Adrian Hauser, he's due for some regression, guys. 17.7% K rate. That is in the 26th percentile of starting pitchers. 10.6 hits per nine innings he's given up. That's in the 14th percentile. And 32.2% .2 hard contact. That is in the 12th percentile. Not a good combo. He had a start against the Braves, and it was his last start, surprisingly. He now gets to face the Braves twice. Last start, six innings, three runs. Quality start, pretty good, right? Um, do you really want to face the Braves twice in a row? I mean, honestly, who's going to probably win that second matchup, especially when you're Hauser, who's not missing many bats. So Braves have an elite offense. We all know that. I expect them to get at least four, five, six runs in this game and get almost to the total by themselves. Yanni Chirinos is on the mound for the Braves. Uh, he was just on the Rays, and he got released, and there is a freaking reason. Um, Chirinos reminds me of Churros, by the way. That sounds really good right now. But um, anyways, he doesn't go deep into games. He won't. Um, he has an unbelievably just... It's going to blow your mind. Low, 11.8% K rate. He is striking out 11.8% of bat more batters than I am. That's it. 37% hard contact. That's more than Hauser. How about in the third percentile? Brewers should be able to contribute to this total against Torino. He's on this team, another team for a reason. He's not good at all. I expect like a, I don't know, maybe a 7-4, to 7-5 to five game. This should easily go over the 8. Final one. Astros team total over three and a half. This is a tough one. I know they're facing Shane McClanahan. You think, why would you tail that? Why would you fade McClanahan? He has given up 11 earned runs in his last 13 innings and 12 Ks only in those 13 innings. Is there a chance he's still hurt? Maybe. He had some back spasms, some issues. He was only thrown in the 60, 65 pitch range. Last game, he finally went up to 80 something pitches, but he gave up like four or five earned runs. I think there's something a little off with him. He's not missing a ton of bats when it comes, at least not the bats he's used to. 
And uh, and now Astros, the Astros have Jordan Alvarez and Jose Altuve back with Chaz McCormick swinging well, Kyle Tucker raking, Alex Bregman hitting well. This lineup is just too good to not get four runs. It's just I just can't imagine them not doing it, especially against a guy who's been struggling lately. So give me the Astros team total over three and a half. Phillies over eight, Brewers, Braves, Astros over three and a half, plus 310. Let's get a nice Friday parlay winner to end the week. We made it through. Let's check out that bets recap page. There it is. Twins minus one and a half at plus 104. Reds team total over three and a half runs at minus 120 on FanDuel. And we got Harper and Julian, one plus hit each, minus 117 on FanDuel. And then the Friday parlay, plus 310, that is on DraftKings. Phillies money line, over eight, and the Astros team total over three and a half. Man, we did it. Thank you guys for all the support. I hope we just crush Friday. I hope you get a ton of winners. Um, if you haven't joined that Discord, link is below. It's a ton of fun. We talk a lot of sports uh, with the members. We do betting contests and things like that. So, anyways, we also have NFL football videos coming out here in the next few weeks. An AFC video and an NFC video. We are going to talk fantasy breakout stars. We are going to talk who wins each division and give you our best future bets for this NFL season. We cannot freaking wait. So, anyways, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Hope everyone has a great weekend, and we'll talk to you later.